Hey guys, welcome to the Prometheus series. In our previous video, we discussed the concepts of observability and monitoring in detail highlighting their differences. In this video, we will delve into Prometheus, one of the most widely used tools for observability and monitoring. So without any further delay, let's get started. Before we dive in, let's start with some basic concepts beginning with what is a metric. Let's consider a simple to-do application serving many users. And all of a sudden, we found out that our service is running slower than expected. One possible reason for this slowness could be the high number of users using our application at a given time. To understand this issue, we must know the request count with which we can easily determine the cause and take appropriate steps to improve our service performance. Here, the request count is a metric which represents a numerical measurement at a specific time. Generally, a metric consists of a name and a value. Optionally, it may contain labels that help describe a metric, making it easier for querying and analysis. So in short, metrics are key indicators that tell us how a system is behaving, like how busy our system is, how many resources it is consuming, and how fast it's working, etc. If you look at this metric, it represents that we received 20 HTTP requests with a status code of 200. In this example, HTTP request count is a metric name, code 200 is the metric label and 20 is the metric value. And another example for metric is average response time. This represents that request with slash api slash v1 endpoint with get HTTP method are responding in 120 milliseconds on an average. Please note that we can have multiple labels for a metric. Like this, we can have many metrics for an application. For example, the CPU usage, memory usage, error rate, etc. All of these metrics help us greatly in understanding the reasons behind our application's behavior. Perfect. Now we have request count. Let's say we want to check how many requests we received in the last 10 minutes. How do we get this information? For this, we need to store the request count at intervals along with a timestamp. For example, at 10 am, we received 100 requests and at 10 1 am, we got 50 requests, etc. This type of data is referred to as time series data because it consists of a sequence of data points measured at specific time intervals. Each data point includes a timestamp and the associated count of requests at that particular moment. But where do we efficiently store this time series data? Relational or NoSQL databases doesn't fit here because of this nature of data. That's where TSDB comes into the picture, which is a specialized database optimized for efficiently storing and querying time series data. TSDB stands for Time Series Database. TSDB organizes this time series data in a way that allows for fast and performant retrieval of historical data points. Some popular TSDBs include InfluxDB, OpenTSDB, TimescaleDB, and Prometheus. Now that we know some basic concepts like what is a metric and what is a time series database, let us start understanding what Prometheus is. In today's world, we have hundreds and thousands of services and each service generates its own metrics exposed through an API. Not just applications, even nodes on which our applications run as their own metrics like CPU usage, disk space, etc. Like this, we can have many different components which has their metrics. Now that we have so many metrics from so many different applications, the question is, wouldn't it be great to store all these metrics in a central place to understand what's happening in our ecosystem? And wouldn't it be great if we could gain insights from these metrics? And finally, wouldn't it be great if we could receive notifications when something goes wrong based on these metrics? That's where Prometheus comes into the picture. Prometheus is an open source observability and monitoring tool designed to gather metrics from various configured applications and store them in a time series database. With this collected time series data, we can create cool dashboards that provide comprehensive insights and analytics about our system performance and behavior. Additionally, this data allows us to set up alerts that trigger notifications for critical events such as service outages or high CPU usage, etc. Originally, Prometheus was developed in 2012 by former Google employees at SoundCloud as an internal monitoring tool for their services. Now Prometheus is maintained by CNCF. Being closely integrated into the cloud-native ecosystem, 
Prometheus offers native support for containers and Kubernetes. On another note, I made a playlist on Kubernetes if you want to learn Kubernetes in detail with complete hands-on. Please check it out. Not only Prometheus, there are numerous other solutions available for monitoring Kubernetes clusters like Nagios, Datadog, New Relic, etc. However, Prometheus stands as the de facto standard or widely adopted due to its status as open source software with native support for Kubernetes. Moreover, many Kubernetes components automatically provide metrics in the Prometheus format, simplifying their discovery and integration with Prometheus for monitoring purposes. That's it for this chapter. I hope this chapter gave you a very high level understanding of what Prometheus is all about. In the next chapter, let us try to understand Prometheus architecture in detail to understand how it works. Stay tuned. My name is Pavanil Tapu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the content, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.